Okay, let's talk about the CSS box model. This is a very, very key concept to CSS. If you're going to understand how to build layouts and how to style backgrounds and borders and line up your elements on the page so that they're forming nice columns, you really need to understand CSS box model. So this is something that is applied to every single element on the page. It doesn't matter if it's an anchor, an H1, a header, a main, the body, they all get this applied to them. So how does it work? I've got three paragraphs on this page. I've given each of them an ID so I can target them individually. But I'm going to start off by saying that the padding on all my paragraphs is zero. The margin on all my paragraphs is zero. And the border set to none. All right, these elements here, plus height and width, make up everything on the page. This is the box model. My paragraph right here. So it has a height and a width. When I click on it in here, um, if I select, there we go. So you see where it flashed the paragraph, that background that appeared, that light blue color. That is the content area for the paragraph. Right now there's no padding, border, border, or margin on it, so the only thing left is this little piece in the middle called the content area. When I click on the paragraph, that blue area, that is the height and the width of this element. So if I come in and target Ricky specifically, and I say the width of Ricky is going to be 500 pixels. 500 pixels will cut it off here. If I say the height of Ricky is going to be 400 pixels. So now I've got 400 pixels tall by 500 pixels wide. That is the size of this element. If I shrink it down a little bit, let's say it's 300 by 200. That is the size of it. So that blue area, when I click on it, that is the 300 by 200. That is the content area. If you give an element a background color, so let's say it's going to be burly wood. There we are. That is the background color for the content area. So I'll put a comment in here. Content area will be burly wood. That is the first layer of the box model. Now, outside of this content area, there is a layer of padding that you can put on. Right now, it's zero. So zero pixels on all four sides. There is no padding. Beyond that, there's border. And beyond that, there's margin. So there's three extra layers that can be added on top of here. What's the difference between them? Well, if we look over in the browser here, you notice how this text is pressed right against this edge here. There's no space between the edge of the text. And then again at the top, it's right against the top. I mean, there's a little tiny bit of line height in there, but really the text is against the top and it's against the side. This is never a good idea for your design. You never want to have the text touching the border or the text touching the background color change anywhere. So, padding. This is how we create the next layer. If I said that padding is going to be 20 pixels, I now get 20 pixels on the top, bottom, left, and right. All four sides are getting 20 pixels. I've created some space. And the background color of the padding, same BG color as content area. Important to remember that. That's one of the big distinctions. So padding, border, margin, they're all just extra layers of space around the content area. The differences between them really have to do with the colors. So padding automatically gets whatever your background color is. Beyond that, we have a border. So if I said I wanted 10 pixel solid, by default it's black. Uh, let's go with something that's not going to look nice with this. Red. Okay, all three paragraphs are getting 10 pixels of padding 
and then, or sorry, 20 pixels of padding and then 10 pixels of border. So 20 pixels around here. So in between the content area and the border, there's 20 pixels and then the border is 10 pixels wide. So 10 pixels of the each of the four sides, 20 pixels on each of the four sides. And then margin. That is our last one. Oops. I want to do cut that and paste it below. There we go. Now it's in the order. Padding border margin. That's the order that it gets applied. If I add 30 pixels of margin. There we are. I have 30 pixels of margin on all four sides. Now it doesn't look here like this is 60 and this is 60. There's a gap here, which is really only just a little bit more than 30 pixels. So what's going on here? Whenever margin overlaps with margin from another element on the top and the bottom, the largest size of the two is what gets applied. So they're both 30 pixels. 30 pixels is what's going to be applied. If I said that Ricky, my first paragraph, was going to have margin on the bottom of 50 pixels, then what's going to happen is this space is going to become 50 pixels. There. Now, this is 50, this is 30. Doesn't matter which one I did, the larger of the two values is going to win out. This middle paragraph has 20 pixels, this one has 50 pixels. 50 is the bigger number, that's what gets applied. Left and right, both will be applied. So if there was another paragraph sitting here beside it, they would each have their 20 pixels, or sorry, 30 pixels of margin. So there'd be a total of 60 between the two of them. All right, padding, border, margin. I was saying before that color was the biggest difference between them. Border, you specify the color. Padding, it's automatically the same as the background. Margin is always transparent. There we are. That's the difference between the three of them. Padding, border, margin. Padding, it's the same as the background. Border, you choose. Margin, always transparent. The three of them really are just three more layers of space that are added on top of the content area. The content area, that's your height and your width. Going beyond that, that's your padding, border, margin. And it's up to you to decide which ones you want to use. If you're not setting color on any of them, it doesn't really matter which one you're using most of the time. So we can come in here and we can change um, Bubbles or Julian, our other two paragraphs. We can say that border is set to none, or we can say zero as the value. So border width is zero. That gets rid of it as well. So that got rid of the 10 pixels that we had for that. And margin, we can set to zero. We still get the big space up above here. This is the 50 pixels. And down here, there's still 30 pixels. And we still have our padding of 20 pixels around. We just don't notice it because it's the same as the page's background. It's that transparent color which shows the white background of the page. So if I were to add background color, uh, let's go with uh, cornflower blue. There we are. Now I can see that there is space around here where the background doesn't have text on it. So this is padding. There is no border. We set the border width to zero, so there's no border. And margin has been set to zero. But there's still space. There's still 30 pixels here and 50 pixels here. 50 pixels was set as the margin bottom on this one. And 30 was the default right here that we set on all paragraphs. So this guy's got 30 on the top, this guy's got 50 on the bottom, and that is the gap that we have above and below. If we were to target that third paragraph and set margin top to zero, you'd see all of that space disappear. That was the only thing holding it apart was the margin top on here. He had zero, he had 30, 
the 31 out is the bigger value, so that's why we got it there. And that's the fundamentals of the CSS box model. If you understand how the content area has padding border margin layered around each around outside of it, and those three layers exist on every single element, no exceptions, all elements get those three values applied to them outside of the content area. Then if you understand that, you understand the box model and you are going to be able to build your pages and have them line up the way you want. All right, any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.